So I'm very happy to be again here in this place familiar to me. Let me postpone, we will postpone celebration. There will be a lot of space for this. So I keep some time to, uh, I save some time for what I want to say. So this is, ah, before that, I want to say that there is some, impro somebody of you may remark some improvisation in my talk. This is for a, my misunderstanding because I made an error in the brain reservation and I want to excuse me with the speakers of the previous uh, talks because I was convinced that today was the first day of the conference. I, I mislooked the program, and as the previous chairman knows very well, he gave me the possibility to prepare a little bit more the, my talk. So, okay, let me uh, just say uh, what we want to do. We will sp speak about Bogolyubov transformation, which is considered a very well known uh, uh, topic. In, uh, in quantum theory. Uh, but uh, the point is that, that uh, some times ago in our work on the Virazoro algebra with Andreas Bugas, we met uh, some generalization, non-commutative generalization of the hyperbolic functions. And since it is very well known that uh, the first order, the usual quantum mechanical uh, uh, Bogolyov transformations are related with hyperbolic functions, we thought that there should be a, a connection between the two. So we began to study more deeply the structure and to compare the first order, which means the usual quantum mechanical Bogolyov of transformation, and those that come naturally into quadratic quantization. Quadratic quantization is important because it's the only quantization that will lead to a finite dimensional realgebra replacing the Heisenberg algebra. Starting from three, they will be all infinite dimensional. Now, what is strange is that we discovered that effectively the non-commutative hyperbolic function appear in the first order. We are accustomed to use commutative hyperbolic function in first order tra Bogolyubov of transformation. But in fact, when you study their structure, already appear in the first. In the second, they also appear, but as you will see, in a much more uh, unexpected way. So <coughs> we <coughs> take, <coughs> take an, uh, an algebra of state functions tau, uh, which is simply algebra for pointwise multiplication and uh, and the conjugation, and we call K the, the complex pointwise conjugation, so that a star functional is just a, a functional which satisfies this commutational relation with the intertwines conjugation and the conjugation in, in the Hilbert space. In the Bogolyubov uh, uh, transformation, as you know, uh, antilinear transformation play an important role. Antilinear means antilinear and uh, uh, self-adjoint essentially means that you have this property note that uh, contrarily to the linear case, the uh, scalar product factors are exchanged. Now we define Bogolyubov transformation. First we define the CCR Lie algebra is the standard boson CCR algebra with the test function, with test function space this algebra tau, and uh, standard boson commutation relation. So the enveloping al universal enveloping algebra will be devoted also CCR, but with capital C, capital C, capital C, capital R. And it is associative star algebra. Now, we want to study Lie algebra endomorphism, the most general Lie algebra endomorphism of the CCR. So the most general must map, uh, in fact, it, it must map generators into linear combination of generators. So generators are A daga A and the central element, and these are linear combinations. So since it depends on the test function and the left-hand side is linear dependence on the test function, the S operator must be antilinear. 
okay so the adjoint is obtained by the requirement that u hat is a star Li algebra isomorphism and therefore uh, this uniquely as is well it is well known uniquely determines by algebraic extension the homomorphism on the capital CCR uh, algebra of tau. So, the family of endomorphism is a semigroup with identity implemented by the triple. So, we have seen that uh, every homomorphism is determined by a quadruple because the central element will go. This is a requirement in our definition of homomorphism. Central element, in fact, it follows in some. Uh, we, we follows from the fact that we assume that the central element is one up to multiples, and so there is one constant that enters in the central element, one linear operator that enters in the creator test function, one antilinear operator that enters into the uh, annihilator test function, and one linear functional that enters into the multiple of the identity. So we have a quadruple. The quadruple that corresponds, you compose endomorphism, of course you obtain endomorphism, and uh, the composition gives, uh, well, not so much of course, because we should say, rather than a semigroup, we should call it a semigroup, a groupoid, semigroupoid, because you can compose endomorphism only if uh, if we suppose that uh, the each endomorphism is defined on the whole algebra, then we can speak of semigroup. Otherwise, we have to suppose a compatibility condition on the range. Now, how if I have two endomorphisms, I have two quadruples. If I compose the two endomorphisms, what will be the corresponding quadruple? And the answer is this. If I have two quadruples, C, S, gamma, C, and C prime, S prime, gamma, prime, C prime, corresponding to two uh, uh, um, endomorphisms, then if I compose the two, you see, the composed endomorphism UV is, the, the C is this, the S is this, the functional is this, and the constant is this. And in the first two, you recognize the Non -com uh, non -com what I mentioned, the non-commutative generalization of the addition formula for trigonometric functions. Okay, typically hyperbolic because you will see why hyperbolic and not general general trigonometric. Okay, so this is the law of composition of the quadruples associated to Bogoliubov automorphism. Uh, the inverse uh, 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 is determined uh, uh, by the following con conditions. So the, in, the invertible, those who have a left inverse will play an important role and uh, are characterized by these uh, conditions. Okay, this I already mentioned, that the, 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 the composition is uh, generalization of the addition formula, but a corollary of this composition is that if you consider purely hyperbolic Bogoliubov transformation, that is uh, with uh, only C and S, then still you have a sub semigroup of the semigroup of all endomorphism. Okay, we will restrict to this. You may say, say that this is a very small restriction, but if we uh, think of the analogy with the general structure theory of Gaussian maps and its connection with infinite divisibility, you understand that unfortunately this is a, a big limitation. The constant is very important, especially when we want to classify semigroups. Now, the, okay, this I already said that uh, if I have a, a, a starly algebra, uh, uh, homomorphism into uh, an associative uh, star algebra. This extends to the universal enveloping. This is a standard property for all universal enveloping uh, algebras. Okay, so we define 
the Bogoliubov endomorphism, I mean, I should have put also the constant in the general definition. So a general Bogoliubov endomorphism is characterized by a quadruple. Okay? But we will study in detail only triples. It's not a not big difference, but, but it makes exposition much easier. So now you see, this is the first point that we will discuss later on. You see that uh, uh, the characterization of this trip, forget about uh, the gamma, I also forget about the linear function. I only consider the purely hyperbolic Bogoliubov transformation. As you see, the first condition is a very famous hyperbolic uh, sine and cosine identity. The second one is not so much widespread in the theory of why. And you will understand the emergence of the, the people that use this. Physicists never use this condition. Why? Because physicists use the standard approach to Bogoliubov automorphism that is realized on a tensor product. And this will be the, sec the, uh, the, uh, the second family. This condition shows that the two are not the same. You, you can realize Bogoliubov automorphism at the level of single particle space, but they are not equivalent to the original construction of Bogoliubov. And uh, you see, the, in the case of states, for Gaussian states, you know from Araki theorem, that, that is a theorem that you can represent a Gaussian state on the, on the uh, te uh, tensor uh, product on Fock and on the entire Fock. But there is no such theorem, to my knowledge, for Bogoliubov and Tomovi, that if you have a one particle, you can represent. And in fact, it, for most general, it is not true, because this condition is not satisfied in the, in the tensor product case. And in fact, you will see that it disappears because the C and S act on different factors of the tensor product. Sorry. How, how much? How much? How much time I have? 13. OK. So this, now you begin to int have the intuition of the emergence of the hyperbolic structure. So this gives the structure of the pairs that satisfy the two, that sol solve these two equations. The most general solution of these two equations is obtained in this way. First, you define a self-adjoint operator by taking essentially a cosinus plus or minus, but uh, the, you see the square root, not the squares. Then, give, having defined this operator x, you see, you define the operator, the operator S, roughly speaking, you find the hyperbolic sign, but with a correction, given by a partial isometry. And again, here you find hyperbolic sinus, but again with a correction given by a partial isometry. Okay? And this gives guarantees that uh, the square relation is satisfied. Okay. Ah, isometry. I say uh, this is not partial isometry because S is anti-linear. So since modulus of S is linear, uh, we must be uh, anti-isometry. Okay. And the important point is that the converse is true. So this is a full characterization of. The, quadru the pairs that define Bogoliubov automorphism. Now, now well, uh, here I put a topology because I want to discuss semigroups of such automorphism. So I need the continuity condition. A very natural topology is given by that. If you, the, me the topology on the CCR algebra, Lie algebra, and the, the four also on the, uh, the polynomial algebra on it, which is the capital CCR algebra, uh, which makes con uh, uh, continuous this map if I put on this Hilbert space the, weak, the, weak, the topology of weak convergence. This is intuitively clear because when you take commutators, they ap appear scalar products. And when you take enough commutators, you reduce everything to scalars. 
And so you can define this topology in a purely algebraic way in terms of commutators. Now, now one parameter group of automorphisms, or semi-group of endomorphisms. Okay, so we will have a family of Bogoliubov and endomorphisms, and we suppose that it is a semi-group. So according to the general theorem I said before, we have the two compatibility condition like this together with the fact that it's, uh, we suppose strong continuity, so it is zero at identity. Now, this, the, this condition, you see, the semi-group condition is just automatically satisfied. However, you must, we must have, uh, since that, uh, you see, uh, the left-hand side is not obviously symmetric in S and T, but uh, the right-hand side, but the left-hand side is. So you need the, it, for semi-group, uh, this which is a partial commutativity condition. And the same for S. And you have this additional condition on coming from one particle space. And what we want to say, to look at how do we, these conditions are reflected on the generators of, the, of them of the semi-group, okay? So we take a one-parameter family, we take, assume that it is a semi-group. We take a, a, the, a, the infinitesimal generator, very uh, just, we need uh, continuity in this, differentiability in this uh, very weak sense, <laughs> that, that there exists this limit in, uh, uh, the, the, which is the derivative at zero. For C, we call L plus, and for L, we call L as much. And therefore, simple calculation of this derivative gives that the, Bogolio, the generator of the semigroup has this form. It's a combination where, of course, uh, the uh, L minus is anti-linear and L plus is linear. Now, let me uh, 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 write this equation in terms of A and A daga, so we can write it in matrix terms. In matrix terms, we write the generator in matrix terms, therefore we can easily exponentiate. And we find, when you expand the exponential in series, you find exactly what we, was our starting point uh, with the uh, uh, Bukas. But the point is that this formula we met not for the first order, but for the second order. So how to explain this? So I will do the, uh, okay, ah, a last important, uh, before explaining the second order, I want to show how the two relations between the uh, partial isometries in the representation theorem for Bogolubov quadruples reflect at the generator level. You see, a generator level you have, this condition is very helpful, that is L minus must be self-adjoint. But there is a constraint between L plus and L minus. L minus must commute with the real part of L plus. And this commutation relation this is the one that comes from the quadratic connection between the two partial isometry Wu S and Wu C. This is the infinitesimal form of this quadratic uh, relation. Okay. Okay. So the interesting point is that if the generators are bound, aha, he's not charging. He's not charging. Can can you, uh, because uh, it, I don't understand why is it not charging? The cable is not connected. Oh, I forgot to connect. <laughs> yes. I hope. Yeah, yes. Sorry. Uh, he 
it, it is exhausted completely. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. I'm so sorry. Okay, sorry, now I can take again the discussion. Uh -uh, yes, okay, so I mentioned it, just to conclude the first order case, that there exists the most widely used uh, Bogoliubo transformation, or the tensor transformation, in which you I just for simplicity consider the hyperbolic, purely hyperbolic case, and this is the only constraint. So the, com the, br the, b the quadratic constraint among the partial isometry in the tensor case doesn't exist. Now what happens? In, uh, now let me, okay, we, we jump this. The, the, of course you can do the same thing of uh, one parameter case, and the structure is uh, simpler because there is one constraint less. So you have much more freedom in the choice of the generators. Okay? Now, let me go to the square case, which is most interesting. Uh, the, let me recall you what is the renormalized square of white noise algebra. The renormalized square of white noise algebra is uh, the Starley algebra with generators denoted in this way, the test function space, in fact, is important here. Up in the first order case, is not important algebra structure. In the second order case, it's essential that the test function space is an algebra structure because you see the commutation relation. This commutation relation are a commutation relation which in the Lie algebra theory are called the uh, current algebra over SL2R. Okay? Now, I... What I want to discuss is, I in very intuitive language, not very precise, but uh, intuitively is this. What are the analog 
of Bogoliubov transformation for the quadratic algebra. This is the quadratic algebra. And what are the analog of Bogoliubov transformation? Now, we tried, it, it, but it's very difficult to construct the analog of Bogoliubov transformation for single, for the single case. So we went to the simpler case, which in the first order case, usual quantization, is the tensor representation. So I will study. I think it is possible to solve this problem also in the single space. But I, uh, there are some difficulties, and I don't want to. Well, uh, 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 an important corollary is that the, line, the generators are linear independent. In fact, this is a. Now, we define, now, we want to define the analog of the. We want, in some sense, to do a constructive, like Bogolyubov did. Bogolyubov embedded the standard CCR into a tensor product and then computed the compatibility condition for the computation relation. And what we are going to do is the same. We embed the quadratic CCR into a tensor product, and then we compute the compatibility conditions for these embeddings. Okay? So this is the idea, precise definition of a representation of a starly algebra into an associative star algebra you can imagine. So, Important point is that since we are thinking of a, a tensor product, the two uh, image, the, uh, we have images of two Starley algebra and they must commute. Okay, that is the crucial point. So the index J is one two, and two and labels the Lie algebra and F label the test function. And for different J they commute. Now, this motivation for this paper is a generalization of an old paper we did with Uwe Franz and Amos of long ago, uh, in which we uh, realized this for the subgroup of Bogolyubov transformation, which are called quasi free map. Namely, those which are induced, which don't involve linear combination of all three operators, three generators, but map creator into creator, annihilator into annihilator, and center into center. And we characterized this. And uh, now we want to do more general uh, situation in which, uh, well, I, 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 again, I, I, I don't consider the most general case. I only consider the purely hyperbolic case, namely, creator goes into a linear combination of creator and annihilator, as we did for the first order case, OK? So also in this case, but in this case, we have four operators. Why? Because, you see, we have, in the CCR, you have only creator, because annihilator is defined by the star property. The image of annihilator is defined by the star property. But in the quadratic case, you have also the number. And so, also the number will have two copies in the first factor of the tensor product and the second factor of the tensor product. That is why four operators appear. And so we have to study the, instead of two, there are four. And so we have to answer the first question. Which quadruples? Now there are quadruples of operators, which will correspond to a Bogolyubov, a, a tensor Bogolyubov representation of the renormalized square of weight. Why we call renormalized is a long story, but essentially there is a constant that appears. This constant you can interpret either in the algebra sense as a central extension, or as it historically came as a renormalization constant. And the crucial point is that if this constant is zero, all the theory is zero. So re renormalization, even if algebraically is trivially, conceptually is very important. Okay, so now we give a first characterization of these quadruples. They must satisfy some rather complicated conditions. But uh, uh, we will solve this condition later, so don't pay much attention to the first. But the last one, you see, is reminiscent, is in fact, in some sense, exactly as in the first order case. 
For us, this was extremely surprising. Why? I, we don't, still don't understand. We don't understand conceptually, because the commutation relations are completely different. The first order commutation relations are not embedded into the second order one. Why the same hyperbolicity condition like this one comes out also in the quadratic case? We don't understand at the moment. We hope we will understand before or later. Now, I recall notation that we have this uh, algebra tau will be L infinity intersectional one, and we uh, will consider step functions with uh, bounded support and finite number of values to simplify the, the proof. Then there is uh, the second structure theorem. The second structure theorem is the following that if we assume continuity, here we need almost everywhere continuity of the operators realized in L2. We are working in L2 spaces. Then, you see, this is the big difference between first and second order. The operator X and Y must be themselves endomorphic, algebra, endo associative algebra endomorphism. Do you understand that it's enormously more restricted than the family of second order? As you expect, because nonlinearity is a much stronger constraint than linearity, even if it is quadratic. And the important point, and moreover, we have a phase that must be given by a, a multiplication by a function. Theta cannot be arbitrary operator, and this we also find in the old paper with uh, uh, Franz and Amosov. And the converse is true. That is, if we have two endomorphisms, and A, A and two arbitrary, arbitrary Borel functions, real valued, then, in fact, we put it to pi, but of course it's the same, then the quadruples that we will now define using x, y, theta c, and theta s, will solve the compatibility equations that we found in the previous year. The compati all these compatibility equations. Okay? And now we use another, uh, we make a bridge with another fa uh, famous, so you see the, the endomorphism must satisfy the hyperbolic relation. What does it mean that a two endomorphism satisfies the hyperbolic sinus cosinus relation? And here we make a condition, uh, a connection with a famous, I have no time to explain, but there is a famous uh, line of research which was initiated many, many decades ago by von Neumann, and, and this is called the lifting theorem. Roughly speaking, a lifting theorem is this. If I have an uh, endomorphism of uh, L infinity of R with Lebesgue measure when, as a star algebra, as a star, al as a, say, von, von Neumann algebra, take just a structure of von Neumann algebra, when an en a star endomorphism with continuity property, normality, is induced by a point transformation. And there is a, now a lot, this is a now well-developed theory, theory in analysis. And the result, we simply used this known result. And so that is why we assume that we assume weak continuity and continuity for the duality L1, L infinity, which is normality for the L, L infinity as for Neumann algebra and the pre-dual L1. Then, Using this theorem, we know that the endomorphism x and y, uh, th that there exist Borel measurable maps, point maps of Rd, Rd into Rd, such that, such that x is uh, given by the composition, xf is the composition of f. In fact, you have to subtract the phase to have a homomorphism, if you remember. Uh, the composition 
with this map. And why of this? Is the, and, the, and, the, and here you see, um, I should take a, jo a joint. I forgot to put a joint here. It is an anti-linear. Moreover, for T being uh, either TS or TC, the, this uh, transformation, major transformation, must preserve absolute continuity. And uh, you need to have uh, uh, subjectivity, at least for the cosinus part. So, because of absolute continuity, they have some densities, the two measures, lambda c and the lambda s. And you see, the quadratic condition is exactly the pointwise hyperbolic condition on the Radonicodim densities, not... It's, it's, it's very complicated to give uh, this, this condition for automorphism. But if the automorphisms are implemented by absolutely continuous transformation, then the hyperbolic relation can be given in the standard way using the Radonicodim derivative. Okay? So, the most general form, and you recognize here something that uh, reminds you the Gibbs factor, but it's not the Gibbs factor because beta can be a nonlinear function. So see, this is the local Gibbs factor that enters in the local equilibrium state. Our motivation was to generalize the result that we had in the paper with the Amosov and France, in which we constructed the KMS state for free evolution. In fact, a very special class. I, I think this class should be generalized, but even in the case of uh, standard quasi-free. But uh, here, we are not even able to prove that it uh, satisfies KMS. We know that surely it satisfies that covariance level, and that every KMS must be, the covariance must involve a factor like uh, this local Gibbs factor, okay? But the full KMS condition, because of nonlinearity, is uh, not easy to. I am uh, intuitively, I would bet a lot of my small patrimony on this, on the fact that they are KMS. But we have not yet the proof. We, I hope it can be. Now, again, there is a standard fact that if you have a continuity preserving uh, uh, transformation, this will be implemented by a unitary transformation by taking the square root of the, of the uh, radon nicotine derivative, okay? So you associate the, um, well, I've not written here, the US and UC, you see, C is the square root of the radon nicotine derivative, and the S is the square root of the radon nicotine derivative. So this is the standard way to associate unitary operator to uh, measure abs absolute continuity preserving uh, transformations, okay? And what is interesting is that this, auto by, by construction, this unitary are, are such that they implement the corresponding star endomorphisms. So, these are not only star endomorphisms, but they are inner. Okay, they are inner star endomorphisms. Okay, so, this is now the present stage of the situation. And what is uh, to be, uh, what we hope to do is uh, to prove that among this class of uh, Bogolyubov uh, quadratic automorphisms, in the linear case, it is well known that all the one that I can do by putting the isometry trivial, if I put isometry trivial, they are all KMS for free evolution. It, the one with isometry non-trivial were not known. 
I'm not seeing them in the literature. So I cannot say if they automatically satisfy KMS or not. In the quadratic case, I am uh, rather confident they are, but uh, this is uh, still an open problem. As you see, there, there, is a, there are a lot of open problems that should be done. Some are less difficult, for example, to, to complete the full classification, not considering only C and S, the pure trigonometric case, but considering the full. This is, I think this is a reasonably achievable uh, accomplishment that can be, can be done. And uh, like this, there are other problems. But uh, KMS is not so easy. So thank you for listening. Transformation of annihilation to somehow combination of annihilation creation. Yeah. And then this transformed annihilation satisfies you against the CC annihilation. Yeah. And then so scale of this uh, again satisfying this uh, uh, algebraic relation of B plus B minus N. Yes. So they are quadratic. Yeah. So this means the first order body of transformation. How somehow related to second order? They are included, obviously. Uh, they are included because if they, uh, we, because of the universal property of the enveloping Lie algebra, uh -huh. if you if you have a, a Lie algebra endomorphic, star endomorphic, it extends to all the powers. So, in particular, to the square. <laughs> mm. 